What's going on YouTube? This is SG1 Sports and you're watching our college football channel. We continue with our 2023 schedule preview projected record series. The Iowa Hawkeyes are up next. Before we get to 2023, let's look back at 2022. So here is the schedule for Iowa last season. Uh, you see an 8-5 record, 7-5 in the regular season. Had a really tough stretch right there in the middle. Michigan, Illinois, Ohio State. Uh, three really tough games there in a row. Still surprised that they lost to Iowa State, but you know that, that was a tough one there. And then losing at home to Nebraska was a bit of a surprise. And given the fact that they were able to go on the road and beat Purdue, beat Wisconsin, go on the road and beat Minnesota. Uh, again, that Nebraska loss was a bit of a surprise. So... You know, an okay season for Iowa last year. You look at who they played out of the East. You know, they had Rutgers. They had Michigan and Ohio State. So Michigan and Ohio State out of the East. Uh, that made for a pretty tough schedule in the Big Ten. Uh, looking ahead to 2023, in the non-conference, they'll play Utah State. They'll play on the road at Iowa State. And then they get Western Michigan at home. Road games at Penn State. They get Michigan State and Rutgers at home. So Iowa State and Penn State, the two road games in the outside of the division and the other four games here at home. Not quite as bad against the East. Uh, again, Penn State is going to be tough, very tough on the road, but no Michigan, no Ohio State. Michigan State and Rutgers uh, figure to be in the bottom half of the East. So uh, this is a pretty good draw there and outside of Iowa State, really nothing tough in the non-conference. All right, so let's go week by week. They will open up with Utah State on September the 2nd, a game that Iowa should be able to take care of business in. Iowa State after that on the 9th. Again, surprise loss last year. We'll see what happens this year. That rivalry is always exciting. Uh, Iowa has, has gotten the, the better of Iowa State most seasons, so uh, well, that'll be interesting. Very interesting to see what happens in that one. Western Michigan on the 16th. Then they'll play at Penn State on September the 23rd. That'll be the very first Big Ten game. So they play all three of their non-conference games first. Then they get into Big Ten play and uh, not, a, not an easy start with a road game at Penn State. On September the 30th, they get Michigan State at home. Then Purdue at home on October the 7th. Follow that up with a road game at Wisconsin on the 14th. Seems like they usually play that game a little bit later in the year, but they'll play kind of right, right in the middle there on October 14th this year. Minnesota on the 21st. Then they get a bye week. So their bye week comes pretty late in the year and not an ideal spot. I mean, it's right before Northwestern and Rutgers. You'd like to have that maybe before Wisconsin. That would probably be a better spot for a bye week. But they'll play a Northwestern. They play that game in Chicago. Uh, they'll play Rutgers on November 11th. And then Illinois on the 18th. That could possibly be a big game in the division. And also this last one at Nebraska. They'll play once again on the Friday after Thanksgiving. And they will play them on the road this year. Uh, so you look at the schedule. It's, you know, it's I would say it's a little bit easier than last year just because of the fact that you trade Ohio State and Michigan for Michigan State um, and Penn State. I think that's, that's easier. You get to play Rutgers, who's... Uh, probably the worst team out of East. So pretty good draw there out of the East. The non-conference is not all that tough. Of course, they do play Iowa State like they always do, but they don't have any other really tough game outside of that one. Um, so this this gives them a good shot, I think, to, to, to get to the Big Ten Championship. You look at their games against the West, they get Purdue at home, they get Minnesota at home, they get Illinois at home. They will have Northwestern on a neutral field, which is kind of really kind of more like a home game for Northwestern. But we'll see how that one goes. Um, and then Wisconsin and Nebraska on the road. So those, you know, I, the way I'm looking at the Big Ten West, I think it's wide open. But Wisconsin and Nebraska and Iowa, maybe those are the three favorites. And they do have to play the other two favorites on the road. So that is kind of tough. Um, and the bye week's not at a great spot. So there are some things that could obviously make this schedule a little bit better for Iowa. But again, when you get rid of Ohio State and Michigan, I think that makes for a, a, a pretty happy Iowa fan base and a schedule that's going to be a little bit easier for them in 2023. Here were some of the projections for Iowa in 2022. Uh, they were 7-5, and five, of course. Our projection had them at 7-5. and five. Uh, My prediction was 8-4. and four. I thought they would do just a little bit better. Uh, the FBI was not very high on them. They had them at 6.7 and 5.4. The over-under was high. They had them an eight and a half wins. So that was, you know, kind of easy money there. I did, I did not see this team going nine and three last year. 
Um, I thought it was eight and four, and then the next likely scenario would be seven and five. And again, they were seven and five, like our projection showed. We'll see if the projection comes out uh, to be accurate this year. Again, here is the schedule. This is the scale that we'll be using. If it's a 50-50 game, that'll be a game in the white. That's a game where I think the spread will be less than a touchdown. Under 20, over 80, those are games where I think the spread will be 20 or more points. 20 to 29, 71 to 80, those are games where I think the spread will be double digits. 30 to 39, 61 to 70, those are games where I think the spread will be about a touchdown. Six, seven, eight points. So we'll start with the easy wins. I think you've got Utah State and Western Michigan. Uh, those are games where Iowa should be favored by probably about 21 to 24 points. Uh, Utah State was pretty bad last year. Um, they might be favored by even more. Um, and, and, you know, you, you go back to last year, as bad as their offense was, there were still games that where Iowa was favored by like 28 points. Um, so I think they will be favored by 20 plus in both of those games. And then uh, I think Rutgers, you can put in the blue. I think they'll be favored by double digits in this one probably 16, 17 points, um, probably, so probably somewhere in that range. But that is not a guaranteed win, but should be a pretty easy win for Iowa. So those three games will be counted as wins when we do the projection here in just a second. Now, how about games where they will be favored by about a touchdown? I think Michigan State and Northwestern probably favored by seven or eight points in these two games. You know, Michigan State, Northwestern, I had down years last year. You would expect them to at least be a little bit better this year. It's hard to say right now. Again, this is February, so by the time we get closer to the season and then end of the season, maybe these games are closer to 50-50 games, or maybe they're games where Iowa is favored by 14, 17 points. Who knows? Uh, but I do think they are clearly going to be favored in both of those games. Penn State's the one game where I think they're going to be a clear underdog. I think they'll be about a touchdown underdog in this one. Perhaps more. It is on the road, but it's pretty early in the year. Penn State with a new quarterback. Uh, this is going to be a really talented team. And I, Again, I think Penn State will clearly be the favorite, but how much will they be, fa be favored by? That's the question. Hard to say right now, um, but I'm going to put that one in the yellow. I, you know, If I had to guess right now, I'll say Penn State will be favored by nine or eight and a half, something like that. And then the rest of the schedule... You know, it's the same thing we did with the Big Ten West last year, um, except I think I had Illinois finishing at the bottom of the West, as bad as that prediction was, and I thought Northwestern would be closer to everyone else. Uh, but it was still a, a situation where pretty much the whole division was was up in the air. And we just called all the games 50-50 games. Purdue, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Illinois, Nebraska, all these games are going to be considered 50-50 games for this uh, projection. You know, I think Iowa will be favored against Purdue and Minnesota and Illinois at home by four or five points and, you know, something like that. And they'll probably be underdogs against Wisconsin and Nebraska on the road, but not huge underdogs, three or four points. And again, all these games are, are close enough. These teams are close enough where we just throw them in there and say these are 50-50 games. And then Iowa State, because they beat Iowa last year, because it's on the road, you know, I think that has to be considered a 50-50 game. You can't really say that Iowa is going to be favored by a touchdown. Uh, I don't think. We'll, you know, we'll see. Um, so, to get the projection here, we count the the green and the blue games as wins. We use 35% for the game against Penn State, 65% for these games in the purple, and 50% for everything else. Average it all out, and you get a projection that's a little bit better than last year for Iowa. Remember, the projection was seven and five. This year, it's eight and four. So, a you know very sim similar formula because. You have a bunch of 50-50 games in the division, but like I talked about earlier, you know this schedule is a little bit easier when you've got Michigan State in there and you don't have Michigan and Ohio State. You have Penn State and Michigan State, no Ohio State, no Michigan. That makes for an easier schedule, and that's going to kind of make these percentages be a little bit higher, and uh, that does give you uh, one more win in the projection. So for Iowa, the projection in 2023 is for them to go eight and four.